What if you had a program that you could import all of your hand histories into and it would automatically compare your stats to a solver? And this program could tell you instantly exactly where you deviate from a game theory optimal strategy in any spot in the game tree. It would make studying a lot easier, right? Because you would know what your leaks are before you start studying. And rather than doing what most poker players do, which is studying random hand histories or watching whatever video their subscription training service decided to put out that week, you could have a specific prioritized study plan focused on your biggest leaks. In this video, for the first time, I'm gonna be showing a tool that I've been developing in hand -to -note for over two years. This is an automated GTO stat checker, and it's really been one of my secret weapons as a coach, both at Poker Detox, Cash Game CFP, and my current company, Mobius Poker Coaching. I'm gonna jump into demoing the stat checker right now, and I'm gonna show you how to use it to study your own leaks, but I'm also going to show you how to use it against your opponents to study the leaks for you to exploit in your pool. And if you're interested in the stat checker, make sure you stay till the end of the video, because I'm super excited to announce that I have a new program coming out at Mobius Poker where you can purchase the exact stat checker that I'm showing in this video, the same one that I use at my company, as well as a full video course explaining how I use hand -to note which is, in my opinion, the most underrated poker software in the market right now. And I'm gonna teach you how to use it to accelerate your progress as a poker player and absolutely crush your games. Let's get into it. All right, so I've got hand -to note open here, and the first thing I'm going to do is import some hand histories into my database. So I'm gonna go here and import this folder of hand histories. This has about 200,000 hand histories in it, and you're gonna see hand -to note is super fast. It's already imported the hand histories, and now it's preparing to build the statistics that I have created in my GTO stat checker. It's building statistics for all of the players in the database at a rate of about slightly over 2,000 hands per second. And so I have about 200,000 hands here. So this will take a little under 100 seconds. So in less than a minute and a half, I'll have all the stats populated. I'm gonna fast forward here and that's it. It's done. It took about a minute and a half total. And now all I have to do is double click on the hero and my stat checker will pop up. I'm gonna show this general tab in a second, but first I wanna look at the preflop tab. So I'm gonna come back to that general tab, but let's look at preflop first. Here I have general preflop stats and open raise preflop stats. And this player that I'm looking at is a student. I've anonymized his data. And uh, the stats that we're looking at are a little bit old, several years back, and this is from 200 Zoom on stars. The player that I'm looking at is plugged a lot of these leaks since I started coaching him, but I wanted to show a uh, database review with a few more major leaks because I thought that would be more interesting than just showing somebody who's playing really very perfectly. So I'm going to look at preflop first, and I'm looking at my 500NL version of my stat checker. I also have two other versions of this stat checker, one for 50NL preflop stats and another for 2KNL preflop stats. So whether you're a low stakes online player or a really high stakes online player, there will be a version of the stat checker that you can use uh, to really get an accurate sense of how you should be playing preflop. And you can see in the general page here, this player has a VPIP of 26, PFR of 22, a three bet of 10. So right off the bat here, I can tell you that the three bet is gonna be a little bit low, lower than it's supposed to be relative to GTO. I tend to try to get students to at least just three bet the GTO frequency, which should be around 11%. So if your three bet is below 11%, which for most regs it is, I think most regs on average, depending on the stakes, tend to under three bet by one to two percent, then you need to check your preflop charts because you're probably missing a lot of three bets and it's most likely that you're under bluffing your three bets. The same can be said for this player for four bets. Uh, he's four betting 12%. And that's definitely too low. I think you want to be four betting at least 14%, potentially even higher. And this, these stats will change a little bit, especially the four bet will change at, uh, depending on the rake structure of the game that you're playing. So if you're playing like micro stakes or in an environment where the rake is really high, you probably want to be four betting even more than that. His full to three bet is 59%. His full to four bet is 45%. Um, these will vary again a lot depending on your rake structure. I'm not as worried about these being a little bit high. Um, I'm, I'm much more worried about the players' 3-bet and 4-bet stats, the raise stats themselves being too low. 
than the fold to three bet and four bet. Then we go down to the open raise section, and this is where we start getting into specific stats where I can actually compare directly to a solver value. And what's happening here is I have the student's stats in the hero column here, and then I have Monker's stats to the right of that for comparison. So we're looking at open raises from different positions. The positions here are on the left-hand side, so open raise from the small blind, open raise from the button, etc. And the Monker frequencies for each position are given on the right. And what's happening is the stat will automatically turn a different color if you deviate too far from GTO. And it's recognizing that this student is actually a little bit too aggressive. He open raises too much from the small blind and from the button and it's coded those stats red because they're too aggressive. On the other hand, if a stat is too passive relative to GTO, the stat checker is automatically going to code it blue. So this student's open raise stats look pretty good. Uh, he's just going slightly wider than GTO um, from late positions, which I think is totally fine, especially from the small blind because people tend to not really defend their big blind well versus small blind steals. They don't three bet enough and things like that. So open raise is totally fine. Let's go to the next page of the preflop stat checker. And now here's where things start to get kind of interesting. So here I have the defense versus open raise section. And I've got three columns here. The first column is the fold versus open raise. The second is the call versus open raise. And the third is the raise versus open raise. Or in other words, this player's three bet. On the left-hand side, I have the positions and the sizings of the open raises. So in the first row here, I've got the hero's big blind defense versus a small blind, three big blind open raise. And Monker's folding 44% versus a three big blind open raise in this spot at 500 NL. It's calling 37% and it's three betting 19%. So this is a pretty tricky spot because you really need to three bet a lot and you also need to three bet a pretty polar range. There's a lot of trash three bets that happen in this spot in theory. And a lot of people don't three bet those enough. So you can actually see that these first three stats in the first three columns are red, which means my student is actually slightly over defending his big blind versus open raises, but he's doing so by calling more than he's supposed to, not by three betting more than he's supposed to. And in fact, he's actually three betting less than he's supposed to, significantly less big blind versus small blind open. This is actually a pretty big leak. He's 3-betting 16% when he really wants to be 3-betting closer to 19% at this break structure. And then versus a 2.5x open from the button, he's 3-betting 13%, where he should be 3-betting 14. And versus a 2.2 big blind button open, he's 3-betting 12%, when he should be 3-betting 13%. So these stats are a little bit too low. They're not low enough to trigger the blue coding in the stat checker. But overall, you can see there's a lot of blue in the 3-bet column. And even the stats that aren't blue are about 1% under where they should be. And then as we go to big blind versus button min steals, interestingly, the student actually stops over defending and even starts over folding versus the min steal from the button. And then versus 2.2x opens and min opens from cutoff and from middle position and from early position, the student is consistently over folding his big blind. Now, this is a pretty strong winning 200 zoom player, and yet already just looking at defense versus open raises, we start to see that the student is really not playing preflop correctly. I mean, he's playing okay, but there's pretty significant leaks already. And this was probably the most surprising thing to me as I did literally hundreds of stat checks over the course of my coaching career. And especially when I started doing stat checks for good winning mid stakes and high stakes cash game players, I was just seeing consistently, basically every time I did a stat check, tons of preflop leaks just like this. And if we go to the next page of the preflop stat checker, it's even worse. You can see that the student is really consistently under four betting. So now we've got the defense versus three bet column and the raise column in the defense versus three bet is going to be his four bet column. And you can see even more blue here, even more under four betting. And it looks like the student on average is also probably overfolding slightly to three bets as well. And I mentioned that these hands are several years old. 
but it really is still exactly the same way, even in 2023. Even now, when we live in an era of completely free preflop charts being given out, everybody knows exactly how they should be playing at their given rig structure, pretty much all the serious regs do. And yet people consistently fail to play preflop correctly and usually play preflop too passively. So definitely something to think about. If the average mid and high stakes professional poker player has these leaks, you probably do too. And I would encourage you to go back and really take a deep look at your charts and check your stats as well and try to make sure are you actually following these as closely as you think you are. All right, so that's the preflop section of the stat checker. And I'm going to go back to the general section of the stat checker now. And we're going to look at this student's general play on the flop turn and river. And these are aggregated stats, which is why I don't have direct PIO stats to compare to. There's no yellow values on this page. But I will offer some target ranges for each of these stats. We're not going to look at all of them today, but just a few key stats, which I think really sum up how this player is playing overall. So the first thing I'm going to look at is on the river, this question mark, question mark, bet stat. And what that means is just that I left the flop and turn and also the preflop action undefined. And I just filtered for a bet on the river. So this is going to be any line where our hero bet the river. Doesn't matter how he got there to the river. All that matters is that he bet. And I'm going to hover over the overall stat for this. And that's going to pop up the second pop up, which shows me the range composition of our student when he bets the river on average. Now, there's a bunch of information here, but what I'm mainly going to focus on right now is the 39 week in black font. Currently in hand to note, I have the week percentage set to third pair or weaker. That's the default. So anytime our student bets third pair or weaker on the river, that's going to be labeled by hand to note as weak. And that happened 39% of the time. Now, not all of these third pair or weaker bets are bluffs. Some of them are actually really thin value bets. But I can tell you that if you're balanced on the river, um, this stat should be 35% weak. And basically what that means is that your optimal bluffing frequency on the river for a two-thirds pot bet, which is the most common bet size we use, is going to be about 30%. And then you add roughly another 5% for really thin value bets that also get in there. So if you're balanced, that stat is going to be 35%. And our student is at 39%. So our student is actually over bluffing by about 4%. And when I look at his pool, we're going to determine whether or not that's a good thing or a bad thing. All right, so we've determined that our hero is marginally over bluffing rivers on average when he bets. The second thing I'm going to look at here is the fold to river bets. So the question mark, question mark, fold stat. This is the same idea, flop and turn action undefined, just folding on the river in any line to a river bet. And our hero folded 61% of the time. And you can see here on the left, I have these modifiers, these extra filters. This is filtering for 150% pot bets in the river, 70% pot bets, and 30% pot bets on the river. And so versus 150% pot river bet on average, he folded 77% of the time. Verse two thirds, he bet he folded 61% of the time, and verse one third, he folded 47% of the time. So, if you know about optimal river fold frequencies, um, which you can learn about if you go to my blog and you read this article, the three, the three pillars of poker theory, and you read section two, minimum defense frequency, um, or just even read this table here, uh, you know that these numbers are way too high. So, if in theory, in a toy game model, um, if you face a two-thirds bet on the river, you're supposed to defend 60% of the time. You're not supposed to fold 60% of the time. So um, the fold frequency in a toy game is actually supposed to be 40%, and our hero's fold frequency over a large sample is 61%. Now, that's not the full picture. The chart on the left is just a toy game model. If you actually look at real games, um, Pio solver, you know, actual game theory optimal models, Pio will fold on average about 10% more than this across all lines. And so if you're looking at a two thirds river bet, the fold frequency on average will be around 50%. But still, our student is folding 61% to two thirds bets on the river. 
So our student is overfolding by probably at least 10% on average, maybe even a little bit more, depending on uh, what the average bet size is in his pool. And now you might say, uh, well, what if his pool is under bluffing? Well, we're going to look at that in just a minute, and I'll tell you whether or not I think this is a good thing or it's a bad thing. Next, I want to just take a glance at the student's river raise. So question mark, question mark, raise. It's 5%, and that is, again, way too low. Uh, the student's definitely missing a lot of river raises. Uh, I think it should actually be like three times this high. And if we pull it up, we see 10% weak. And in this case, I actually want to add middle pairs to the weak frequency. So this is the post-flop diagram. You can see um, low pair and everything above low pair equals about uh, 9 or 10% total. And then middle pairs are also going to be bluffs. When you're raising the river, you're not going to be doing that for value with middle pair. So we can add another 4% middle pair uh, from the student's marine composition. Um, but still, we get only 14%. And the river raise bluffing frequency on the river actually should be similar, maybe slightly lower than the river bet bluffing frequency. So we're looking for a number in the range of 30 to 35% here for the weak frequency. And this student's weak frequency is 14. So this student is under bluffing river raises by 15 to 20%, which basically means that if you don't have value domination and this player raised against you, you should be folding every single time. And that's a huge exploit. He's also bet folding the river 76% of the time, which is again, way too high. So across the board, you know, it looks like uh, he's actually slightly aggressive on the river um, when he's betting, but in every other situation when he's raising or defending versus a bet or defending versus a raise, he's playing way too passively on the river. And I think that's one of the reasons why this student's red line looks like this. It's just severely tanking. Uh, if he fixed these leaks, the red line would probably change quite a bit might even reach break even if you just fix these leaks on the river. Uh, the preflop leaks that I mentioned earlier in the video also contribute to this. So if the student started three betting more and four betting more, he would also increase his red line. If you want to learn more about red line, go check out the last video that I did. Uh, I made a whole video about how to fix your red line, and there's a lot of useful tips in there that go into more detail. All right, so overall, the flop and turn overall stats look pretty decent for this player. He's not folding way too much, um, and he's not you know, under-aggressing really anywhere. So I'm going to skip these two sections, and I'm going to go on to specific flop and turn stats. And again, we'll have uh, PioSolver stats to compare those two. So the first thing I want to look at is I'm actually going to skip ahead to three bet pots when our student is the in-position pre-flop caller on the flop. So that's going to open up this tab here. And the first window is the student bet on the flop. So remember, student's in position pre-flop caller. So his flop bet is going to be a flop stab. That means that his opponent, the out of position pre-flop raiser, checked to him and gave him the option to bet. So the first column is our student's betting range. And then the second column is our student's checking range. And then on the left-hand side here, I've got a bunch of different sizes, um, different filters for different flop sizes. Um, if we just look at the overall, since mostly we just use a small size here in theory on the flop, we can see that our student is stabbing 35% of the time and PioSolver is stabbing 45% of the time. By the way, I probably should have mentioned this, but um, the stat checker currently is excluding all hands versus fish. So these stats that we're looking at right now are just being populated for our students' hands versus other regs. And in this case now, since we're looking at post-flop stats, I have PioSolver stats, not Monker Solver stats. And these yellow values, the PioSolver stats, are calculated um, using multi-flop aggregation reports in PioSolver, if you know what those are. Basically just looking at a, an average of a ton of different boards and aggregating them to get an average frequency for Pio Solver in each spot. So our student is understabbing the flop in three bet pots by 10%. Uh, this is a pretty common leak. It's usually not this big, but people do tend to understab a bit in these spots. And then if we go down to the next table, this is our student's defense versus flop C bets in this spot. So 
We've got the fold column, the call column, and the raise versus flop C-bets of four different sizes, 100%, 70 50 and 30% on the flop. Our students' defense on the flop, um, the fold frequencies look pretty good. Verse one-third, he's folding 28%. Pi is folding 26. First half, he's folding 31 to Pi is 31, so that's perfect. But if you look at larger flop C bets, when our student is in position, he starts to overfold relative to Pi, folding 43% versus a two-thirds flop C bet when Pi only folds 37. And then this one is a little bit of a smaller sample of only 21 trials, but we've got a 67% fold frequency versus pot size flop C bets, and Pi was only folding 52. So this is a pretty common leak uh, in the pools even today. People tend to defend pretty well versus the most common flop C-bet size as the in-position pre-flop caller in a three-bet pot, which is one-third. Um, they fold uh, at approximately the right frequency versus one-third, but then if you look at larger flop C-bet sizes, they start to fold too much because a lot of these are really unnatural defenses. Like versus a two-thirds flop C-bet, you know, the pot's getting pretty big already, but you still have to float like king-queen on some boards and a lot of ace-high a lot of low pocket pairs that are sort of counterintuitive. So this is a very common leak. And if you can look at the, the raise column on the right-hand side here, you can see that Pio against a 30% flop C bet is actually raising 12% of the time in position. Our hero is only raising 3.5% of the time. And if we look at his range composition, He's only bluffing about a third of the time when he raises, which is going to be too low. Uh, it wants to be, I think, at least 10% more than that. And so our hero is under raising versus flop C bets of 30% flop. And I think that's a bit of a leak because we do need to be raising 12% of the time. We need to be protecting some hands here. And also our opponents are likely to overfold if we do raise here. Um, this is a spot where most people don't defend well versus the raise. And so I would argue that you can even over bluff in this spot and steal a lot of pots that way. If we go to the turn, our student is uh, delay stabbing half the time when Pio Solver delay stabs 37% of the time. So that is likely because our student has identified that people tend to overfold in this spot. So I think that's actually a good idea. But on the turn, our student is also overfolding to delay C bets. So this section here, the check fold, that means the flop checked through, and then our student folded to a bet on the turn. Uh, you can see he's got a lot of blue here. He's overfolding to this spot by, it looks like at least 10%. So if we just look at 70% on the turn, um, it's a, sort of a small sample size, but our student folded 60% of the time to 70% pot turn C bets in three bet pots and Pio Solver only folded 40% of the time. First half pot turn delay C bets, our student folded 58 and Pio only folded 37. So both of those stats are 20% over folds. The next page, uh, turn in position pre-flop caller, we're looking at turn stabs after calling the flop C bet. And in this window, we are looking at turn folds to double barrels. Um, the overall stat for the turn fold to double barrel in three bet pots for our student Again, as in position preflop caller is 42. So that's actually pretty balanced. Um, not a lot of blue here. And if we go to the next page, this is going to be three bet pot out of position preflop razor. So that's when our hero is the out of position preflop razor in this case. Our hero is C betting 82% of the time on the flop. So a little bit more than Pio, which is at 71%. His C bet actually looks fine. He's basically just C betting range for one third on a few boards, simplifying that way, and I think that's perfectly okay. Um, but if we look at the next table here, when our student checks the flop, his defense really falls apart. So here we have the defense versus flop stabs as the out of position pre flop raiser in a three bet pot. First column, we've got the fold, second column, we've got the call. And the third column, we've got the check raise. And if we just look at 30% flop stab, since that's the most common size, our student folded 41% of the time versus the flop stab. Pio Solver only folded 32% of the time. And that's pretty bad. And what's also pretty bad is our student only check raised 9% of the time when Pio actually check raises 24% of the time here in theory. 
So this is a spot that like pretty much everybody misses, you know, even in 2023. When you check the flop as the out of position preflop raiser in a three bet pot, you need to be check raising a quarter of the time. And most people just don't come anywhere close to that. What's really cool about hand to note is you can actually, you don't have to just look at the number, you can hover over the number and it's going to show you all the hands that you played here. So I can open up this pop-up and immediately go from the top of the range to the bottom and start looking for hands that the student misplayed. So these two low pocket pairs, these do look like okay folds. Um, here, our student folded a gutter on the flop, which is probably not going to be a pure fold in theory. What I'm gonna do here is actually copy the hand history and I'm going to input it into GTO wizard and we're gonna see if this was a mistake or not. So you can see how fast this is. I'm gonna open up GTO wizard and go to study and then click upload and I'm gonna paste the hand history into here and click study this hand history. And I know I've got a lot of windows open, so it's a little bit confusing. But if we look here at our student's defense versus the flop stab, you can see that um, ace nine suited is being defended most of the time. So you really can't fold a gutter, even though you don't have a backdoor flush draw. You can see ace eight of heart, ace nine of hearts is uh, defending almost all of the time, about two thirds of the time. Same with ace nine of diamonds. And ace nine of spades obviously will always defend, and that's a pretty big mistake to fold because you've got a backdoor flush draw. So if you're taking ace nine of hearts and you're pure folding it here, um, that's going to contribute to this overfold that we're seeing on the flop for our student. Let's look at some other spots, maybe some ace highs. This is another spot that strikes me as a fold that probably shouldn't be a pure fold in theory. Let's take a look at this. All right, I've loaded this up in wizard here. We have ace 10 of diamonds. And if I go over to ace 10 of diamonds, it's getting folded most of the time, but you can see it is still being defended about 15, 20% of the time. So again, if you're pure folding these combos that are getting defended at mixed frequencies in theory, um, that's going to lead to you over folding. And even this one here, like ace queen of hearts, uh, um, ace queen off with the ace of hearts backdoor flush draw on the flop. Let's take a look at this one in GTO wizard. And I've got the sim up here now and looking at ace queen offsuit with the ace of hearts. This is actually a very pure call. Um, we are making two big blinds to call here. So folding here is a two big blind mistake on the flop. That's a huge mistake. And we also want to be raising with this combo at low frequency, but we do still raise it. So if you're, obviously if you're ever folding this hand at all, you're going to be over folding. And if you're never raising, this is going to be another hand that's contributing to your under raising leak. And so this one, you know, obviously is the biggest mistake of the bunch. We want to be prioritizing pure strategy mistakes over mixed strategy mistakes always. But just looking at just a few hands in 30 seconds, I found several mistakes here and the student's stats clearly show a tendency to play too passively in this spot. So what I would suggest the student to do is actually go on GTO wizard and drill this spot over and over again, because these GTO trainers are really good for drilling defense ranges. So just sort of calibrating yourself to what you need to be calling and raising in theory. And if you're way too passive in a certain spot and you drill in wizard, it's going to correct you really fast when you start making these pure strategy folds. So I hope you can see how these stat checks lead to really immediate win rate upgrades. You can look at your stats, immediately find spots where you're overfolding, under raising, just leaving money on the table, and then go use GTO trainers to go drill those spots. And this is going to accelerate your progress as a poker player so much faster than if you're just, you know, again, randomly studying things without first knowing what your leaks actually are. Last thing I'll show uh, for this player is I want to show some river specific Pio stats because 
this is something I've never shown before. And to my knowledge, this has never been published before. What I have here are PyoSolver stats for river lines. And the way that I calculated these was to get a custom plugin made for PyoSolver. Because if you don't do that, then if you try to run multi-flop aggregation reports on the river, uh, the program just goes incredibly slow and potentially even crashes. So this plugin speeds up that process and it actually gives you PIOS fold frequencies and bedding frequencies in different river lines. So this is going back to single raised pots now. Um, I just have these for single raised pots in the stat checker. I don't have river stats for three bet pots or four bet pots in the stat checker because it's pretty much impossible to get like decent sample sizes for those just on yourself because you just don't play enough hands. But for single raised pots, I do have them. And if we look at the single raised pot IPPFR um, river spots, let's look first at bet check fold when we bet 30% on the flop. So this is, again, when we're the IPPFR, we see bet the flop 30%. The turn goes check, check. And then on the river, our opponent bets into us and we fold. So if we look here, um, overall, the student folded 60% of the time in this line. That's too high. Remember from before, we said that our student tends to overfold rivers by about 10%. If we look at just 70% pot on the river in this line, our student folded 62% of the time over, over 100 trials. And PyoSolver only folded 50% in this line. So that's 12% overfold here, and you can see he's blue versus all bet sizes. Um, and he's actually overfolding in every line. So this is check, check, fold, flop and turn, both check through, and then our uh, villain out of position bets into us on the river. Um, these are all overfolded, and check, call, fold, which is when the flop checks through, and then villain bets into us on the turn, we call, and then villain bets again on the river. This was also significantly overfolded on the river. So not only can we see that our hero overfolds in general on the river, we can also see specific lines where he's overfolding. And when you're overfolding by this much, you're probably going to be overfolding in most, if not all, lines. So this is pretty um, much to be expected. Below this, I also have aggression frequencies. So um, how often we should be triple barreling or going bet, check, bet, um, all these different lines as in position pre -flop laser, I have Pio Solver's betting frequency compared to our hero's betting frequency. Um, you can see that our hero, when he bets the turn, tends to follow up with a triple barrel way too often. And if we pull up the range composition for this spot, he's 42 weak, and this is a single raise pot line, so this should be closer to 35 weak. So this is, again, the spot where he's betting too much and he's over bluffing when he does bet. So I hope this gives you a really good idea of what the stat checker entails. Um, again, as I said in the beginning, this is going to be released as a course. So I want people to know exactly what they're getting if they do decide to purchase this. I know we didn't look at every single page of the stat checker, but I'm going to be doing more demos of this in the coming weeks. And before we finish out here, what I'm going to do now is a really cool part, which is actually using the stat checker against our students pool. So in order to do that, Let's close out of this. We'll go back to the home screen and we'll go to the range research tab. Now this needs the edge version of hand to note to use as does the pop-ups on each stat. Um, but if you have the free version of hand to note, you can still look at all of these stats without looking at the pop-ups. But if you wanna look at the pop-ups and you wanna do range research, you have to get the edge version of hand to note. And I actually have a discount code for hand to note for anybody who wants to sign up for a subscription. I will leave that discount code in the description below. What I'm gonna do here is go to this folder where I've got a few reports. And what I'm gonna do here for this report is just run a report for regs um, who had at least 50 hands in this database. I'm gonna build this. You can see I've got 1200 regs in my player's database. And again, this is just the hands that this player played. And that ends up being 650,000 data point hands. So although we only have 200,000 hands for our hero, if we look at all players and all of the hands that everybody played from everyone's perspective, that ends up being 650,000 hands played by regs. You can also do this for fish. 
and I've got 2,800 fish loaded here, and I've got 140,000 fish hands. Um, you can see the fish are losing at over 30 big blinds per hundred. And what we can do here is using just this hand stat, um, 650,000 reg hands compared to 140,000 fish hands. With that, we can do a simple reg to fish ratio. And in this case, this pool has a reg to fish ratio of about four and a half to one. So for every you know table that my student played at, there was on average about one fish at a six max table. So these games are quite good. Um, having one fish per table is definitely ideal. If you've watched my previous videos, you know that the reg to fish ratio is actually one of the first things that I look at when I have a new student come to me. I look at the rake and I look at the reg to fish ratio to get a sense of how beatable their games are. Because sometimes a student comes to me and they're struggling with a win rate of one or two big blinds per hundred not really making a lot of money, but at the same time, they're actually playing the day shift on a website that has like no recreational players on it. And they've got a reg to fish ratio of 10 to one, or maybe even 20 to one in severe cases. In those situations, you know, I'm happy to help people plug their leaks. But the first thing that I tell them is you got to find better games if you want to make more money playing poker, because that's just the nature of poker is we have to pay the rake. And then the majority of our winnings come from the recreational at the table. Unless you're an extremely talented player, you're not going to have big win rates against the other regulars. That's really only reserved for the top 5 to 1% of regulars on any given site. So let's take a look at some stats now for the regs in this pool. And let's look at the regs river bluffing frequency first. You can see that Regs bluffed the river here 34% of the time, and versus our hero, they bluffed 37% of the time. So 34 week, 37 week, this is again river bets in all lines, so flop and turn action are left undefined. So I said that balance would be around 35% weak, so it looks like our pool here is bluffing on the river at about a balanced frequency. This might surprise you if you know you're under the impression that nobody bluffs, but at least you know in Stars 200 Zoom a few years ago, people were bluffing just fine, and I can tell you that that's actually the case for most pools these days, is that people are bluffing at about balanced frequencies, except for on the very weakest pools. And versus our hero, it looks like they're actually bluffing even three percent more. I've got 600 trials for bets against our hero, and I've got 2,400 trials for bets against uh, the other regulars in the pool. And so, although that might seem like a lot, this actually isn't a statistically significant difference, at least not at a very high confidence interval. So I can't say for sure if people are bluffing more versus our hero, but I can say that it, it is likely that some regs in this pool have identified that our hero is playing like kind of a nit on the river and they're bluffing more against him to exploit him. And so if our population is bluffing around balanced, if not maybe even slightly bluffing more than a balanced frequency against our hero, then we don't want to be overfolding by 10%. Uh, because if you're overfolding by 10% on the river, um, at that point, you know, you're, you're not just overfolding within different hands, you're probably folding some hands that are plus EV to call as well. And so you're leaving money on the table here and you're, you're playing weak passive poker and if you play for long enough in a decent pool, the best regs in that pool are going to identify that and they're going to punish you for that. So that's sort of leak that can make it hard for you to move up in stakes if you're just folding rivers way too much. Moving on to the river fold for the pool, that's at 57. So if you remember, our hero's river fold was, I think, 61%, and that was a massive overfold. Well, the rest of the pool is folding 57%, so... Not that much better. We've got at least a 7% overfold, uh, maybe even slightly more from the pool. And so if you remember for that back from the beginning of the video, our hero was marginally over bluffing, over bluffing by about four or 5%. And so that's actually a good thing because he's exploiting this tendency of his pool to overfold the river. And you could even maybe even bluff slightly more than 39% uh, of the time or whatever 
our hero was bluffing. I think it was 39. Uh, you could even go into the low 40s if people are overfolding this much. Um, if you were to plug in a 7% overfold into PioSolver, you would see that PioSolver would drastically change its strategy. It wouldn't bluff a little bit more. It would bluff a lot more. All of those bluffs that are indifferent in theory are going to all turn into pure bluffs. And then PioSolver will even reach into hands that are pure checks in theory and start bluffing those quite a bit, if not purely. Let's take a look at a few preflop stats. Um, so you can see here um, the open raise looks fine. The small blind open raise looks a little bit light, but that's just because a lot of players are playing an open limp range from the small blind. So that's not really a leak, but you can see they're three betting less than 9%. So their, their three bet is even lighter than our heroes. It's pretty bad. If we go to the defense first open raise section, you can see the most common leak is overfolding versus min steals. Um, the pool folded 44% of the time versus a button min steal from the big blind. And PioSolver uh, only folded 35%. Now, again, I said this is a 200 zoom pool, and I've got a 500 ml rake structure here. So this uh, overfold is actually not quite as big as it looks, but the rake structures are pretty similar. So it's pretty safe to say that this is at least like a 5% overfold. More importantly, they're not three betting enough. Again, just like our hero, you can see there's a lot of blue in the raise column. This is the three bet column. And so if your opponents are not three betting enough, that gives you liberty to open raise more often than you should in theory. And again, if we go to the second page of preflop or the third page rather, you can see a lot of blue in the defense versus three bet raise column. So this means that they're not four betting enough. They're also overfolding to four bets quite a bit. You can see a lot of blue in this column here. And finally, um, if we look at some, let's actually look at some of the same stats um, that we looked at for our hero. But first I wanna look at IPPFR on the turn. Look at the last page here. Look at the defense versus turn probes. So this is when regulars in our pool are IPPFR in single raise pot. They miss the C bet, so the flop goes check, check, and then they face a bet on the turn, or in other words, a turn probe. You can see they folded 50% of the time. Um, for 70% turn probes, they folded 50%. That's the average size turn probe. And Pio only folded 38%. So if we probe the turn, 70% pot, we are anticipating a 12% overfold. And this is probably if you've studied, you know, any exploitative coaches material before, you might know this one. Um, this is just a huge, huge overfold. It always has been, and it will be for probably a very long time to come. People just don't defend well in this spot at all. And they actually also under raise. So if you look at the raise column versus turn probes, you see two blue values here. That's facing 50% uh, pot and 30% pot turn probes. So if you probe turn small, they overfold quite a bit as well. Um, they even overfold more than verse two thirds. And then they also under raise verse these sizes as well. In verse one third, they only raised 7.3% of the time, which is less than half of what Pio was doing. Pio was raising 15% of the time versus this size. So people are missing bluff raises, they're missing you know, protection raises, uh, and that makes probing small really good in an exploitative sense. If we go to three bed pots as the in position preflop caller on the flop, you can see that the pool has pretty much the same leaks as our hero did. This is again the flop stab window. Uh, people are not stabbing the flop often enough. And then if we look at half pot C bets um, and larger, uh, people are defending pretty badly versus half pot C bets and larger as the in position preflop caller and three bet pots. They're defending better as uh, against the 30% flop C bet, but they're still under raising. So basically, our student or our hero had the same leaks as the pool did, which is pretty common, you know, because um, the average reg has these leaks and you see them just come up over and over and over again when you do many stat checks the way I do. Um, just to show you the defense versus flop stabs, it's the same issue. People are overfolding versus flop stabs, and they're especially under-raising versus the small flop stab. 
They only check raised 11% of the time versus 30% flop when Pio check raised is 24% of the time versus 30% flop. All right, this video is getting pretty long, so I'm going to cut it here, but stay tuned for next week because I'm going to take a random subscriber and do a full stat check for them on this YouTube channel. If you like this video, make sure you check out my other stuff and make sure you come back next week to see that full one-on-one -on -one stat check that I do for a subscriber. Also, make sure you check out my Twitter and my YouTube channel over the next couple of weeks. Um, most likely at the end of next week, I'm going to be officially announcing the launch of this course and you'll be able to buy it. So keep an eye out for that. Um, this course is going to be priced affordably so that even low stakes players can afford it. Um, this is really, you know, I'm, I'm very excited about this course because more than anything else that I've done before, this really is the course that I wish that I had when I was starting out in poker and trying to fix my leaks and really establish my style of poker and move up the stakes. And in order to do that, I had to stop making so many mistakes. If I had this tool when I was first starting out, I think I would, just, would have just saved myself so much time and energy um, fixing my own leaks and then also learning how to use this program, Hand to Note, which I'm going to teach how to use in the course, which, trust me, I mean, it took me countless hours to figure out. Hand to Note is a notoriously complicated program. So uh, I hope that this course helps people to get off the ground faster with it. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, good luck at the tables.